After successfully sending humans to the moon, one of the greatest dreams of mankind was to send humans to Mars. Exploration of Mars has been ramping up in the past few decades. NASA and other space organizations have planned to send humans on Mars by the late 2030s. This might be a small time frame due to our current space technology. One of the major problems is being exposed to radiation in space. So, how bad is the radiation on space and on Mars? And can we solve this with our current technologies? Radiation can be described in various ways. It can be energy or particles from a source that travel through space or other mediums. Light, heat, microwaves are all forms of radiation. However, out in space, there are three kinds of radiation. Particles shot by the sun during solar flares or coronal mass ejection. Particles trapped in Earth's magnetic field. Galactic cosmic rays. Space radiation can place astronauts at significant risk for cancer, central nervous system effects, and other degenerative diseases. Radiation can be created by humans or can occur naturally from stars, radioactive elements on planets, quasars, galactic centers, and much more. In our solar system, the biggest source of radiation is our sun. It is constantly emitting light in several frequencies and has steady outflow of solar winds, which contains highly energized protons, alpha particles, or subatomic particles. These subatomic particles can be dangerous to human beings as it is often powerful. Solar flares and coronal mass ejection are so powerful that it can shut down the entire Earth's electricity and communication in less than a minute if aimed directly to Earth. If coronal mass ejection were to be aimed at an astronaut without much in the way of protection, it will make them really sick. While this is bad, it is not the biggest worry for scientists to overcome our Mars journey. There is radiation traveling through the space even faster than from the sun, known as galactic or cosmic rays. These are radiation ejected from extremely energetic events like supernovas. These particles accelerate at almost the speed of light and can pass through entire spaceships or bodies unimpeded and any atoms they pass through will be ionized. Luckily, our home planet has a number of protections which shelters us from this radiation. Earth's magnetic field deflects these particles to space, producing beautiful auroras around the poles. This magnetic field also holds our atmosphere from being stripped away due to solar winds. Well, we Earthlings are lucky, but our neighbor Martians are not. Mars doesn't have a powerful magnetic field like Earth and gets constantly bombarded by radiation. Here comes another problem. To get to Mars, astronauts have to spend a minimum of 100 days inside a rocket in space. Our technology can deflect particles from solar flares and coronal mass ejections, however cosmic radiation can still make their way to spacecrafts. Our recent rover missions to Mars measured how much radiation an astronaut will observe during the mission. 0.66 sievert or full body CAT scans every 4 to 5 days. On Earth, we observe 0.0025 sievert on the same period of time. One of the best ways to tackle radiation is by putting a lot of mass in front of you to block it. But adding mass to our spacecrafts brings other problems and makes it hard to lift off. One of the technologies that NASA is currently working to overcome this is by hiding a makeshift bunker by putting a lot of bags and supplies around astronauts. The best element to protect astronauts from cosmic radiation is hydrogen so scientists are also experimenting with an idea of water in the wall of spacecrafts. However, on Mars's surface, we cannot rely on our spacecrafts as scientists have to come outside to conduct research. For this, NASA is researching on spacesuits made up of or lined with hydrogenated boron nitride nanotubes. This compound is strong and contains hydrogen atoms which can prevent astronauts from radiation. However, 
testing still needs to be done before it can be confirmed. Another option that scientists are studying is by building a force field around the spaceship like replicating Earth's magnetic field. This is something we can build, but it is not energy efficient to have it on our Mars mission yet. But perhaps by 2030, our technology might be advanced enough to have this. Let's say astronauts arrive to Mars in the late 2030s. Will the situation be better for them on Mars? Well, a little bit better than now, but nowhere near to Earth. Mars has no magnetosphere and very thin atmosphere meaning little to no protection on the surface. It is estimated that the radiation on Mars' surface is about 0.64 millisieverts per day which is just over NASA's acceptable limit. But NASA's plan is not just to leave astronauts on Mars' surface inside the space shuttle. One idea is that we can build habitable domes around Mars and make a human base but using 3D printers. Having a base on Mars' surface will prevent the astronauts from dangerous radiations. Perhaps we have a lot more testing to do, but it does seem like there is a possibility. With all of these working perfectly, we might be able to keep space radiation as low as possible. However, we will have to wait for another decade to find out. Are you interested on Mars? Check out our amazing video about colonizing Mars. Thank you MyFitness7 for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in health and fitness and want to lose some weights, do check www.myfitness7.com. Link is in the description. And lastly, if you find any value on this video, consider subscribing to our channel. This helps us to create more content for you. Make sure to check www.astropy.info for latest space news and discoveries. Subscribe to our newsletter using the link in the description. And thank you for watching the video. We will see you around. Goodbye for now.